Hi, and welcome. Today, we're going to take a look at doing some post-processing of fireworks photos. So whether you've been shooting for Independence Day, New Year's Eve, or just some other special occasion, we want to take a look at the photos that you've captured and show you how to bring out the best in them. Okay, so for this particular photo, we have an image that's obviously shot at uh, Walt Disney World in Orlando. And we've got a lot of color in the sky. We've got a lot of light going on with the various fireworks bursts. Matter of fact, this one is kind of a bit of a multiple exposure. If I bring you back over here to the library module, you can see that this one is uh, shot at 35 millimeters and it was shot for about uh, 22 seconds exposure. So yeah, there it is, exposure 22 seconds at F16. So that what that technique did was basically we kept the shutter button open and then we used a, like, basically a, like a black baseball cap. You could use a card or cloth, anything you want to. And we covered up the lens during the time that we didn't see the explosions that we wanted. So this way we were able to get multiple parts of the show in one frame. So that's really all this is going on here. It's not that we did anything in Photoshop to bring all these elements together. We just did it in camera. Now that we've got the shot, you can see there's really a lot of darkness in the area around going down Main Street, you can barely make out what's going on with the buildings. So what we want to do here is we want to bring up the surrounding area and environment. We want to straighten the photo out and we want to enhance the color. So let's go back to the develop module and get started. First thing I typically like to do is go into lens correction and I'm going to turn on my profile and remove chromatic aberration. And you can see that I just made a little bit of a change right there. So I'm going to hit the backslash key and give it a little bit of a before and after. You can kind of see that it's just a little bit warped. It's really not too bad at all. So that part we've got out of the way. And then I'm gonna come up here to the crop tool and just kind of turn this a little bit so that my building is straight up. And there we go. So we've cut out a lot of the bottom and some of the fireworks up top, but that's okay. The most of what we're looking for really is kind of towards the, the center of this. So let's go into the basic panel. And the first thing I want to do here is really open up the shadows and see what I've got in my environment. All right, so you can see that automatically that just gave me a lot of color. It shows me some more detail of what I've got along with the building. So I think we're off to a good start with, with this photo. And I want to play with the dehaze a little bit just to kind of darken up the sky. So what I typically like to do is I want to bring my blacks down just a tad because I'm expecting this sky to be black. And I'm gonna bring my whites up just a little bit. Highlights really depend upon the fireworks in the shots. Um, if you're really bright, you might wanna bring them down. If not, you know, it's just really, you are kind of coloring to taste here. And I'm looking at, in this, in this photo, I'm looking at bringing them down just a little bit. And the reason I wanna do that is because these little spires that are showing up here, I don't want them to blur together because the highlights, you know, kind of bleed into one another. I want to show unique and individual uh, channels of light coming up and down here. And now let's go ahead and see what we can get with some contrast. I just want to bring that up. Okay, now let's take a look at our before and after at this point. That was before, and that's where we are now. So you can see we've really kind of brought out the the leading lines that are coming in here with the buildings. I think we can do a bit better. Before we do that, let's take a look at what we have in our sharpening. And what I would like to do here is just kind of look at the mask and see that we're only going to be sharpening the parts that we need to. And in that, I just want to sharpen up kind of our edge detail. And most of the photo doesn't need sharpening. So I was just holding down my option key and moving the masking slider over to kind of get that black and white view. And that looks like it works for me. So we haven't really messed with the colors that much. Rather than saturation, I kind of like using vibrance and clarity. But instead of doing this as a global item, what I want to do is get an adjustment brush and then kind of move those things up. So I'm going to bring up clarity and I'm going to bring up my vibrance. And let's see, using the bracket key to make my brush a little bit larger. And really all I want to do is affect 
the mask that I have on the fireworks themselves. I don't want to bring this on everything else. So I'll stop and let the spinning cursor go away and just kind of enhance those fireworks. Okay, I think I'll do that. Let's uh, turn that off. And it's kind of a subtle change, but an important one, I think. So you've got those colors popping out. Now, if we take a look at our before and after. So there's where we started. And there's where we are now. What I'd probably like to do next is bring up with another brush, adjustment brush. Um, kind of, the, I want to pull out a bit more of what's coming on here on the size, and maybe highlight some of these things. So let's go ahead and get a new brush. And I might want a little bit more than that. So let's bring it up to 1. 1.58 and it's basically a stop and a half. And hit the letter O to so show up my mask. Oh yeah, I've got a lot more room here. Okay, I'm liking that better. So I've got, I don't want this to overwhelm the fireworks, but I do want to have some detail in here. So you can see the sign kind of came out a little bit and we've got more on the building. We can see that down here with some of the lights are showing up and these little uh, Mickey pumpkin heads were kind of obscured. So we've got that in the way. Let's bring down just a little bit on the bottom here. And let's go back and look at our before and after. So there we are before. Like I said, you can't really even see the Mickey Mouse pumpkin heads that are over here. You can't really make out the sign or anything. The colors are there, but they're not quite as vibrant as they should be. But now it's it's more like what you would experience when you were there. The They dim the lights within um, the Magic Kingdom, but yet there's still a little bit that you can make out because your eyes are going to pick up more detail than the camera's going to show. So you need to kind of replicate that when you're doing your post-processing. But mostly what I'm doing with this photo to bring out the color is I am trying to add more contrast and add my color and vibrance to the fireworks themselves rather than to everything globally. Because if I, if I pumped up saturation, everything would be really cartoonish. And it's, it's already kind of very colorful, even along these uh, areas on the side that are kind of dim because of the lighting that's, that's reflected on them and, and what they have just normally with inside of the, the environment. You can see on the bottom of the castle over here, there's a bit of a red light because Disney does a lot of dramatic lighting. So you've got kind of a, a colorful environment that leads you into your photos. Straightening it out, doing the sharpening, and also just a little bit of dehaze because when you're getting into fireworks environments, you're getting some smoke and haze in there. And depending upon whether it's your first shot, usually those aren't so bad, but as the fireworks go on, more smoke and haze are going to come out. As you can see over here on the right-hand side, there's some of the smoke from the previous fireworks. And it's, it's okay to leave that in there. That is part of the show. So if you want to really get in there and maybe get um, a healing brush and, and just kind of eliminate that, you could. I'm not going to do that because to me, that it's part of the scene. But overall, that's a very bright and vibrant kind of color. And that's, that's what I felt when I was watching the show. I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, we have more tutorials on the YouTube channel, so please uh, visit us. You can go to williambeam.com slash YouTube and check out the channel. I would love it if you would subscribe. And of course, there are more tutorials and tips on williambeam.com. You can find that we have a podcast over there that comes out weekly. It's called The Photo Flunky Show. You can go to photoflunky.com and find it there. So we've got a player. You can listen to all of our previous episodes. And if you have suggestions for other tutorials that you'd like to see for post-processing or different types of environments or portraits, please let me know. I'd be happy to help. Thanks so much.